Okay, I am on the Lawrenceville bathroom. This is a pretty good size, large bathroom that I've already started the demo on. Um, this was just builder's grade, eight by eight white tile on the floor here. This used to be carpet on this outer edge of the floor. Double vanities, one over there, one over there. We're not gonna do anything to those. And there is a closet. And this is a jacuzzi tub that had the same uh, builder's grade white tile on it. Same with the backsplash over here, going all the way around with the knee wall. This is a toilet closet with the same 8x8 builder's grade white tile. So this will all be changed out. And then we have this shower with the fake shower pan, the plastic shower pan, which I never like. And then a rather large bench in the back. Again, 4x4 four four builder's grade white tile. So we're going to change all this out. And this is the tile we'll be using. This is a slate tile. This is a 12x12. 12 12. We also have 1x1. One one. We have 2x2. Two two. And somewhere we have 16x16. 16 16. So the slate is going to go coming in from the bedroom, master bedroom. The slate is going to go on a diagonal. The 16x16 16 16 will go on a diagonal across the whole floor here. Transition with the transition strip across here and do 12x12 12 12 in the toilet closet, straight, not diagonal. Customer hasn't really decided on the design for sure, for sure yet, but I think I'm going to be putting the one by one on the face of the tub, two by two on the tub lip itself, which I'm going to extend out to that edge right there. So I'm going to get about another three or four inches out of this little tub edge, and um, that will have that. Probably do a 12 by 12 with, you know, going up here, and then a two by two, two rows of it with a cap on top of it, the same type of. Um, slate they have a really nice you know trim to go around we're going to follow that around this way although this wall will be going away <clears throat> this will be kind of an interesting shower renovation everything remains the same as far as what i do i always change out the fixture i always put a niche on the back wall this will become the back wall this shower fixture will go away and i'll be putting a new one on this wall the reason why uh you can tell there's probably another four foot, four and a half feet of room right here to this closet. And I usually try and bring the shower as far as possible as I can to get the maximum width and depth of a shower. Uh, in that case, the shower would probably be a good part of 12 foot long, which is not really practical, although it would be nice. But probably about half this room, maybe up to about three quarters of this room, I'm gonna extend this out. This will become a wall coming out here. This knee wall will go away and I'm gonna build a seven foot wall up to about where the window trim is. Seven foot wall will come all the way up to about where the tub is, right here. And then that wall will drop down to five foot and it will still come across to a point which you can enter. This wall that's gonna go over here will come all the way out. So there'll be an opening here, about 24, 28 inch opening. It'll be a step in shower, the curb will be right here. You'll step in the shower with no door needed because you have six feet of room before you ever hit the shower head. And so this will be a shower with no door and full tile walls over here coming up to this point and then over here coming up to this point with an opening. And so that will be really nice. And um, I'm gonna get started on the demo and get all this stuff together. I don't, I don't anticipate any issues if there are any with a plastic pan like this, there really shouldn't be any, there's not any type of wood damage from having this here, um, but they are cheesy and I, I always enjoy taking these out. There might be some damage behind the bench because it is a ceramic tile with non-sanded grout, um, but if there are issues then I will, I will videotape that as well. Um, other than that, uh, this is uh, again probably about an 8-10 to 10 day job and I'm going to get started. Okay, we are done with this bathroom. Um, as you recall, this had a wood floor on it. Actually, over there by the bathtub had tile that came off. Uh, the wood floor used to have carpet on here. This is slate tile, this is 16 by 16 slate tile. And uh, once all the flooring came up uh, that was over there, the tile flooring, then I used quarter inch Dura Rock and put this slate down so that I could get a good, nice, even transition from the wood floor uh, to the slate. Slate is very funny in a lot of different ways. Um, I don't particularly like it um, for a lot of different reasons. One of them, the main one, is because this 
this slate tile is not honed exactly exactly um, you know it's 16 by 16 for example but it might be you know 15 and 3 quarters on one end it might be 16 on another um, the height of it is a little different so some of this tile sets up a little higher than than the other and you, you know you can kind of tell on these tile where some of them are kind of taller than the other that's just the nature of the beast um, there's nothing you can do about it and some people that like slate that's the reason they like it because it looks more natural but it's a really pain to work with it's a pain to cut it's like a croissant so it comes in layers and sometimes falls apart in your hands and it's very absorbent of water um, extremely absorbent to the point where this tile needs to be sealed at least two or three times if not more um, because it's just going to absorb as much liquid as you can possibly put down on it um, so that's going to protect not only the grout which is usually your main focus is protecting the grout but it's going to protect the tile too this entire bathroom actually got tiled in slate which I would never recommend to anybody but this is what the customer wanted so we got 16 by 16 on this entire floor um, all the way around and into uh, closet area back there uh, the carpet uh, there's a transition strip right at the end there and the carpet's going to get tacked down eventually so there's a little closet over here which is hard to open and this got some in there too just got grouted so some of this grout's a little darker but it is a gray grout um, and then all this haze and everything will come up after it's washed off um, the transition that we made from diagonal, this all this 16 by 16 is the diagonal, I transition um, into the 16 by 16 straight into the toilet closet area and I use some of this trim tile, this 2 by 2 slate that is also on the tub as a transition um, from the diagonal to the straight. So that's what's going on in there. I'll turn this light off. <coughs> then the tub, if you recall, um, had a very small lip, what I call lip, maybe about four inches, if even that. And what I like to do is make things symmetrical. So I brought, actually I think it stopped about here, the lip before. So I brought it all the way out to the edge of this corner wall, um, which goes all the way down to that, that baseboard down there. Um, so there is no reason not to have a larger uh, surface area on this. Um, they use the 2x2 two two, as I showed you over there, the 2x2 two two on the top, that's what she wanted, and then on the face of it, one by one, and all this is slate. And so it's very, very busy, a lot of grout lines and a lot of porosity, if you will. So all this has to be sealed as well, including the top. Now on, on the backsplash area, if you recall, it was builder's grade white tile before. I think it came up to about here, about 8 inches or something like that. So we brought it up with 12 inch pieces, and the 12 inches on top of it has the 2 by 2, or sorry, the 1 by 1, uh, two strips of it that go around, all the way around, and then the 2 by 2 on the top, and that's how we ended it. And then it goes up under the windowsill, and the same thing over on the right side, all the way down to the edge of that tile. <coughs> now, the shower is a whole different thing. If you recall this shower, was builder's grade white tile, and I think it was a three by four shower, uh, four feet going across and about three foot out. Uh, it may have been about four foot out. It stopped about where the tub was at, so so just about there, and it had a plastic, well, fiberglass shower pan at the time. She has so much room in this bathroom um, that I actually suggested building this shower out as much as possible, and I was going to try and do it to that door that closet door, that's another 18 inches or so, and she didn't want it quite that far, that would have made this shower uh, a good eight foot in depth. As it stands now, I got seven feet out of the shower. So what I did is I took this knee wall out that used to be here completely out, and I backed up to the tub as far as I could with this wall, and I built this one up six foot. So this is a six foot wall, six foot on this side all the way going down, and uh, you don't even need a shower door on this, although when I built the curb, I built the same as I would normally with a slope on it, a little 25 to 30 degree slope going in. Um, but theoretically, this won't need a shower door at all because we move the shower head to that wall. This wall is gonna eventually get painted, and this back wall is gonna get painted as well. So we're not doing anything there. Um, this is a one by one tile on the entire floor. 
and it's just very, very busy for me. But this is also a slate tile, and this is 12 by 12 tile on the wall with a little pattern here. Same pattern as we had on the backsplash over here with the two by, uh, one by one, two strips, <coughs> excuse me, the two by two, and then another one by one with two strips on top of that that goes all the way around. All the way around, all the way around. Anyway, if you recall, shower head used to be on this wall over here. So I moved the shower head over to this back wall um, and yeah, it turned out pretty nice. It's a very, very large shower now and built a bench in there. And they had a bench going across before. I was gonna get rid of it and just have a more open space, but they wanted something. <coughs> so what I ended up with was about a, I think this is about a 30, 36 inch um, bench that I managed to tile all the way around. And um, uh, I don't know if it's uh, something I would do, but that's what they wanted, that's what they got. We got lucky on this backsplash because, I say lucky because this construction on this wall is two by six rather than two by four. So they ended up with a wider shelf than what I normally do. A nice wide shelf and um, again, the one by one on that back wall. Uh, it's a recurring theme on this bathroom. And we did a little pencil um, for the outside trim to frame all that stuff in. and. Uh, you know, the tile all the way up to the ceiling with this nice, very expensive trim on the outside with 45 up there in the corner and then up on this edge right here going down to the wall. And so that's the gist of it. It's a very, very large shower. Um, somebody will be really happy to, uh, to eventually, well, the homeowner will be happy, but whoever purchases this house will really be astounded at the size of the shower. So anyway, this is actually uh, my ninth day. Usually it's eight to ten days on a bathroom rebuild, and this one took a little bit longer. So this is my ninth day, and I am now out of here, and I am going to continue on to the next job. I've actually got a couple already scheduled, so I'm going to back out of here and get things going.